Hello, my name is Mike Heeman, and this is Luke Gilbert, and our laboratory is at the Koch Institute for Cancer Research at MIT. We'd like to take a few minutes to tell you about our current study, which is due to be published in this issue of Cell. So this study concerns an important aspect of cancer biology, that is, the persistence of minimal residual disease following cancer therapy. So many cancers actually respond very well to chemotherapy and irradiation, particularly hematopoietic malignancies. Unfortunately, many of these tumors also relapse over a period of time. So patients uh, can be asymptomatic for years following treatment uh, and still retain small sets of tumor cells. Upon relapse, these tumors subsequently become more and more drug resistant, eventually failing chemotherapy altogether. So we wanted to ask two basic questions regarding minimal residual disease. The first of which is, what are the sites of minimal residual disease following therapy? Where do tumor cells go following treatment or survive following treatment? Secondly, what are the factors in these tumor microenvironments that allow the persistence of tumor cells following treatment? In fact, in this study, we describe an example of a site of minimal residual disease in a mouse model of cancer. Luke Gilbert the first author of this study is going to tell you about more of the molecular details of this work. So in this study, we use a well-established preclinical mouse model of human Burkitt's lymphoma, the emumic mouse, to characterize tumor cell survival and relapse following therapy. Shown here is a cartoon diagram of the tumor burden in the emumic model prior to treatment. Here we see a disseminated pattern of lymphoma distribution with tumor cells present in all of the primary lymphatic sites. If we then treat mice with the frontline chemotherapeutic agent doxorubicin and monitor tumor response, we see tumor cell apoptosis and tumor regression. Surprisingly, the majority of surviving cancer cells persist in the thymic tumor microenvironment. And this occurs despite the presence of equivalent amounts of DNA damage at all tumor sites. This surviving population of lymphoma cells fuels subsequent tumor relapse and repopulation of peripheral lymph nodes and other sites of terminal disease. Thus, this surviving population of thymic lymphoma cells represents a model of minimal residual disease following therapy. If we focus on the thymic microenvironment, we see that DNA damage resulting from genotoxic chemotherapy induces some lymphoma cell death and tumor clearance, but that these lymphoma cells are largely protected by an acute secretory response from the tumor-associated vasculature. And specifically, DNA damage to endothelial cells results in acute activation of the P38 MAP kinase pathway resulting in the release of multiple chemokines and cytokines into the tumor microenvironment. Two of these endothelial-derived paracrine factors, IL-6 and TIMP1, then induce anti-apoptotic proteins like the BCL2 family member BCLXL in target cells, counteracting the cytotoxic effects of doxorubicin on lymphoma cells and promoting thymic tumor cell survival. So these data suggest that frontline chemotherapies can not only induce tumor cell death, but can also engage pro-survival signaling from the tumor microenvironment that protects subsets of, of tumor cells in select anatomical locations. What this means is that effective chemotherapeutic regimens may require agents that kill tumor cells as well as agents that inhibit paracrine pro-survival signaling. If you want to learn more about this study, we encourage you to read our manuscript, which is now online itself.